Today we are going to talk a little bit uh, about one of the smaller members of the trombone family, but we're not talking about the really small members such as the piccolo and the soprano trombone. No, we're talking about the next size down, and that is the E-flat alto trombone. This trombone is, like most of the instruments that I've bought for novelty purposes, of Chinese origin. Um, I can get you one for about 250 uh, US dollars delivered. Um, and uh, it's, it's pitched in the key of E flat, and it's actually very comfortable to play and hold. Now, this is uh, my B flat tenor trombone. I have both trombones resting on my knee, and you can see the little alto trombone is quite a lot smaller. The bells also contrast in size quite, uh, quite noticeably. If I align these trombones up uh, back to back in this manner, the most awkward manner possible, um, you can sort of see the difference in the slide lengths. Uh, the tenor trombone slide is, is marginally longer. Now this trombone, as I mentioned, does come from China, but considering I bought this largely uh, as a novelty item, um, I'm actually very, very happy with the, with the quality of it. The slide is almost silent. It's as good a slide as you'll get on most student level instruments. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of counterweight at the top because they sort of become largely pointless uh, when you've got a trombone that doesn't extend past your shoulder, so there's nothing really for it to pivot with. Um, and it's really, really comfortable to hold. And that comfort is largely born out of this bent hand brace here because it means that your hand just cups it quite nicely when you've got it resting in your hand. And you can either hold it in the normal trombone position like this or with my preferred trombone position. Both feel equally nice and both are equally comfortable. This particular example has uh, the equivalent bore of a very, very small jazz tenor trombone. Uh, you could theoretically interchange the mouthpieces of it. In fact, it's only, it's only slightly bigger than a trumpet mouthpiece. So it fits in between the B-flat of the soprano trombone and the B-flat of the tenor trombone. It fits pretty much smack bang in the middle. Now the first fundamental of the tenor trombone, i.e. a bottom B-flat, is this. The first fundamental of this trombone, i.e. the same equivalent note as far as the physics of the instrument are concerned, is this. So it's pitched up a perfect fourth. You can get alto trombones that are in the key of F, uh, which is a tiny bit uh, smaller still, but this one is in the key of E flat. One good thing, one nice thing about uh, brass instruments, particularly in the brass band family, is the way that they alternate between E flat and B flat all the way down. The trombone section is a little bit dissimilar because um, the bass member, the contrabass member, is, is now traditionally pitched in F, uh, which sort of breaks that cycle. Um, but as you can get alto trombones in the key of F as well, then you know it sort of becomes a moot point. But anyway, I'll give you some demonstrations uh, of this instrument. The tone is quite a lot different to a, a tenor trombone. And I'm sure that if I played this a bit more, the tone would improve a lot. I spent the weekend playing bass trombone, and uh, my regular position is as a solo cornet player, so uh, my chops aren't ideal. But anyway, hopefully I'll give you some idea of, of, of the sound of this instrument. <laughs>
Alto trombones used to be very common uh, in old classical times, Baroque times, and so forth. Um, of course, back then they weren't necessarily called trombones. They had uh, yet to be developed from the uh, old sackbuts, uh, which were the predecessor to the trombones. The main difference between sackbuts and trombones, of course, is that they had a much smaller bore, um, which means that these tubes weren't as thick as what they are now, and these bells didn't flare as much. They sort of had a half-hearted flare that went really gradual and then it would finish in terms of flare about there. So you'd sort of have a bell about that big at the diameter at the end of an alto trombone instead of this which comfortably fits in uh, within my hand span. Uh, they largely fell out of fashion as, as music developed. Um, of course the B-flat trombone became much more popular and uh, other brass instruments such as horns and trumpets were uh, improved by adding valves to them. So this little fellow um, largely fell out of favour. It's sort of come back a little bit into popularity now because um, there's, a, there's a movement out there that suggests that if a piece was written for alto trombone you should play it on the instrument it was written for regardless of um, the availability and uh, affordability of more common instruments which can play the same actual notes. And you'll notice that if I play a note on this and play the equivalent note uh, on, or play the equivalent pitch on a different instrument, that whilst they are the same pitch, they are the same frequency if you get out a little tuner, um, they're going to sound different. The tone, the timbre of the sound is, is quite different. Um, and so that, that movement has a little bit to be said for it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is just a, a, a toy, just a bit of a novelty. Um, I like collecting instruments. I never expect I'll play this out in, in any way. Um, it's useful for some of my multi-track recordings. Um, and yeah, it's enabled me to create this video. Please check out some of my other videos. I've, I've got videos such as this where I demonstrate my various trombones, various musical instruments. I've got some other videos out there where I have multi-track recordings, which is where I record on various different instruments, um, all the different parts to a piece of music and combine them all together so it sounds like I'm playing however many instruments or however many parts simultaneously. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching.